Hi students, in this chapter called Newton's laws of motion, we are going to study the relationship between force and acceleration. This boy is applying a certain amount of force on this box. So what will be the acceleration of that box? We are going to learn about that when we learn about Newton's second law. Similarly, we are going to learn about what makes rockets work. We learn about all these things and about solving problems related to force and acceleration in this chapter, Newton's laws of motion. So let's start off with Newton's first law of motion. Newton's first law states that a body continues in its initial state of rest or motion with uniform velocity unless an external unbalanced force acts on it. What does this mean? The first law of motion is quite simple. It actually means that if there's a body that's at rest, then it will continue being at rest, you know, no matter how much time passes, unless a force acts on it, isn't it? Unless some external force tries to move this body. So you can see this ball is at rest as time passes on and on. Similarly, if a body is moving with constant velocity, like this, say V equal to V naught, then the body will continue moving with constant velocity V equal to V naught, unless an external force acts on it, unless an external force reduces its velocity or increases its velocity. That's Newton's first law. It's also called the law of inertia. Here's Newton's second law. The acceleration of a body is directly proportional to the resultant force acting on it and inversely proportional to the mass of the body. Well, this is an important law and this is the law that you will use most in solving all your competitive examination problems. Understood? What this law basically states is that if you have a body of mass m and if you apply a force f on that body, then the acceleration produced in the body will actually be f by m. Understood? So basically, acceleration is proportional to f by m or f equal to m into a. This is what Newton's second law is all about. If there is any mass m on which a force f acts, then the body will immediately get an acceleration a. So there you go. This law can also be vectorially stated. You can say that the net force vector on a body equal to mass into net acceleration vector of the body. A vector is f vector by m. One important fact regarding Newton's second law that you must remember that it is valid only when mass is constant. So for example, you know, if you have a rocket that is flying, you know, upwards, in that case, F is not equal to MA. The net force on the rocket is not equal to mass of the rocket into acceleration because the mass of the rocket keeps decreasing as the rocket flies upwards. When a rocket flies upwards, it loses mass. It releases gases and it releases a lot of substances into the air. So in that case, F equal to MA is not applicable. Why is this so? Why is F equal to MA only applicable when mass is constant? Well, we learn about all these details in future chapters. But for now, only remember that the mass of the body on which you are applying F equal to MA must be constant. Understood? Another important thing is that F equal to MA is generally applied in one single direction. Okay, for example, if I am applying a force on this ball here, I am applying it towards the right. Isn't it? So my acceleration will be in the same direction as the direction in which the force is applied. F towards the right is mass into acceleration towards the right. Understood? I cannot say force towards the right equal to mass into acceleration upwards. That is not possible. Understood? So you always choose a direction and then apply F equal to MA. Let's proceed. And look at Newton's third law. This one states that forces always occur in pairs. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction along the same line as the action. So what is this law all about? Simple, you must have experienced this law in daily life. It basically says that if you apply a force of say 50 Newton on a body, the body will apply a reverse force of 50 Newton back to you. If you apply a force on the table in front of you, the table will apply a force on your body. Take a look at this man sitting right here. You can see that the man is applying a force of 1000 Newton on the chair, isn't it? 
After all, he is weighing thousand newton. He has a lot of weight. On its part, the chair also applies a force of thousand newton on the man. Understood. In fact, if you are sitting in a chair right now, can you feel the force of the chair on your body? Can you feel, you know, the chair pressing you upwards? The chair is applying a force on your body because you are applying a force on the chair. Understood. So basically, if you take any two bodies and if one body applies a force on the other one, the other one will also apply an equal and opposite force on the first body. This is Newton's third law. So there you go. And now that we've studied the three laws of motion, why not solve an IITJ problem? Let's proceed. This one was asked in IITJ 2007. Of course, for more IITJ problems and more competitive examination problems like this, you can always attempt the tests at topcoaching.com's physics section. So here's the statement of the problem. The question stated that we had to mark our answer as A if statement 1 is true, statement 2 is true and statement 2 is the correct explanation for statement 1. B if statement 1 is true, statement 2 is true and statement 2 is not a correct explanation for statement 1. C if statement 1 is true, statement 2 is false. D if statement 1 is false and statement 2 is true. And what's statement 1 and what's statement 2? Statement 1 is, a cloth covers a table. Some dishes are kept on it. The cloth can be pulled out without dislodging the dishes from the table. Statement 2. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So well, what do we mark? Is the answer option A, B, C or D? In this question, you can see that statement 1 reflects Newton's first law, isn't it? After all, if you take a cloth and if you have some dishes on the cloth and if you pull the cloth away and the dishes don't fall, the point is that the dishes have a certain inertia. The dishes continue to be in their state of rest unless an external force acts on them, isn't it? So the dishes don't fall, the dishes don't get dislodged because they have the tendency to stay where they are unless an external force acts, isn't it? So if you pull the cloth away gently, an external force does not act on the dishes and they stay where they are. This is what Newton's first law is. Newton's third law of course states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Now, which option is correct? Both options are correct, but statement 2 is not a correct explanation for statement 1. Isn't it? Statement 1 is Newton's first law and statement 2 is Newton's third law. Therefore, our correct answer is option B because you had to mark the answer as B if statement 1 and 2 both are correct but 2 is not an explanation of 1. Understood? So there you go. So there. After solving this problem, let's now move on to the next concept. Let's learn about some common forces, you know, that generally act around us in our daily life. These common forces are the ones that you will encounter in most of the problems you will solve for competitive examinations. The first common force is weight. As you already know, weight is the force with which every body is attracted towards the center of the earth because of gravity, isn't it? So the gravitational force of the earth is called weight. Now force is mass into acceleration, isn't it? So we know that the acceleration of any body towards the earth's surface is g which is 9.8 meters per second square. So the gravitational force of the earth on any body is mg. Understood? So if you place a mass m on the table, a force mg will act on this mass m downwards towards the earth. Isn't it? So you must remember that if you place any body anywhere on the earth, a force mg will act downwards on it. Understood? So that's about the weight. The first force we're going to study about, we've studied about F equal to mg. Take a look at the second force, the normal reaction. Take a look at these two boxes placed one over the other. When any two bodies are placed in contact, each of the bodies exerts a force on the other body. This force is the normal reaction. This might seem weird, but try to understand this carefully. 
if any two bodies are pressed together in that case you know a force acts on each of the bodies because of the other body understood this force is what is called the normal reaction it is the same force on both of the bodies so the red block exerts a normal reaction n on the blue block but the blue block also exerts a normal reaction n on the red block understood so this is something you must remember note that the normal reaction is always perpendicular to the contact area so for example if you place two blocks together horizontally then the normal reaction will be horizontal it won't be vertical like this in this figure here as you can see the block has a normal reaction from the table acting on it this normal reaction acts perpendicular to the surface of the blue block understood so the surface of the blue block experiences a uniform normal reaction upwards from the table the reason for the normal reaction is newton's third law you see the block exerts a force on the table isn't it it places its weight on the table and it exerts a force on the table and therefore as a reaction the table exerts a force on the block the force exerted by the block on the table is also n and the force exerted by the table on the block is also n understood so basically when any two bodies are in contact they exert a force n on each other 